Well, good morning. Happy New Year. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are glad to celebrate this new year, this Christmas tide, this Epiphany Sunday with you. And we're glad to be together as a community, even though this is not quite what we expected two or three weeks ago. We expected to be continuing in a hybrid format. We're taking just a couple of weeks on Zoom only uh, for public health and safety right now. And um, we will be on Zoom next week. One of the reasons for that is that in order to plan a good worship service for you, our staff needs to know. And so we did make that decision this morning that we will be on Zoom next Sunday. Um, and, uh, and it'll be a great service because there's, a, there's actually new music to offer to you and some other lovely things. Today we celebrate Epiphany and we're going to do that in two or three different ways. One is that we are going to give each person on this Zoom a star word for the year. And we'll talk about that later in the service, but each of you is gonna get a word for your intentions and prayers and thoughts this coming year. And we're also going to celebrate communion. So if you have uh, bread and juice or a cracker and something to drink close by, bring them to your worship space so that as we get to that moment in the service, we can celebrate community together through the sacrament of communion in this service. And now Sarah and I are going to lead the welcome words and I'm going to add Sarah in and we'll do that together. Pilgrims on this journey. You are welcome here. You are loved. You are beloved. In the fullness of who you are, we are glad that you are here with us. In the Zoom or on YouTube. Folks who speak differently, vote differently, look different. Singles, couples, and families. New or long time. Sad or joyful. Delighted, doubtful, or convinced, or delighted. You are welcome here. People of every race, nationality, religious background, educational background, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual identity, marital status, economic status, and physical, mental, and emotional ability, you are welcome and beloved here. We are glad that you are here right now so that we may journey together. And I'm glad now to turn the spotlight over to Susan Carabio, who is our uh, liturgist this morning. Good morning. Please join me in the passing of the peace. Although we are not present together, maybe we can do a small wave uh, to wish everyone uh, peace. Peace be with you and also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. If you will join me in the call to worship, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of our God, God has risen upon us. God has pity on the weak and the needy. God, God redeems, redeems their life from oppression and violence. Precious in God's sight are the widows, widowers, and orphans of war. Precious in God's sight are the addicted and confused. Precious in God's sight are the abused and neglected. Precious in God's sight are the poor and desperate. Precious in God's sight are all who sit on the margins. Precious in God's sight are all who long for justice. The glory of our God will rise upon them. The glory of our God will rise upon us all. Please join me in the unison prayer. Radiant morning star, 
You are both guidance and mystery. Visit our rest with disturbing dreams and our journeys with strange companions. Grace us with the hospitality to open our hearts and homes to visitors filled with unfamiliar wisdom, bearing profound and unusual gifts. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of him went the star that they had seen at its rising until stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thank you, Susan. And now Sarah has our children's message today. Good morning and happy new year to you all. How many of you have looked up in the sky at night and seen stars? They're really beautiful, aren't they? Sometimes there are lots and lots of stars and other times there aren't so many. It depends on how cloudy the sky is and how many lights are on the ground where you are. People in cities don't see as many stars as folks out in the country. But on a clear night, almost everyone can see the North Star. In fact, the North Star has been used by sailors to help them steer ships in the direction they wanna go. There are scientists called astronomers who study the stars. There have been astronomers for thousands of years. People have always been interested in studying the stars. At the time Jesus was born, there were astronomers living far away from Bethlehem studying the stars. And one night they were looking up in the sky and they noticed something surprising, something that they had never seen before. It was a new star, how amazing. These ancient astronomers believed that the new stars didn't show up for no reason. They believed the new star meant something important was happening in the world. So they decided to follow it. They packed for a long journey across the desert sands. They traveled for days and weeks and months using the star to guide them. Finally, the star stopped over a house in Bethlehem. The men who had traveled so far for so long were filled with joy. When they entered the house, they found Jesus with his mother, Mary, 
And the astronomers knew that the baby was someone special, someone to be honored. And so they immediately knelt down and worshiped him. And they opened their treasure chest that they had packed and offered Jesus precious gifts of gold and frankincense, frankincense and myrrh. Sometimes the astronomers who followed the star to Jesus are called wise men. Sometimes they're called magi. But sometimes so, some may think they're, they were wise because they were scientists who understood about the stars. I think they were also wise because they took one look at that baby Jesus and knew that he was special, that Jesus was this new star, a new light on the world. They understood that he was no ordinary child, but he was someone special sent by God. And that is a powerful thing. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for sending the star to lead the wise astronomers to Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus into the world to lead all the people. Help us to be wise and follow Jesus where he leads. Amen. So the Magi followed a star, and we are going to learn about what our star words might be this year. There is a recent tradition, um, maybe the last 10 years or so, uh, that of epiphany star words. And the basic idea of this tradition is to find a word of holy inspiration that is given to you for this year. Now, it's a little bit playful, and it turns out that being a little bit playful in church is okay, believe it or not. The idea is for each one of us to take a word from scripture and use it to set an intention for our year. And we're also gonna take a word as a church together and see what it inspires in us for this year. Now, in 2020, the last time that we did this, I believe that the church word was creativity, right? And it turned out that we needed more creativity than we ever could have imagined. And we had enough creativity to move through the first phase of COVID together as an adaptive and connected community. And so this year, we're gonna choose a star word for the church in this way. We have some star words that Sarah has put together and numbered. And we're gonna ask every child and youth on the Zoom right now to enter a number in the chat between one and 10. And then Sarah's gonna pick one of those responses at random. And that's gonna be the number of our star word for Pilgrim Church this year. So if you are a kid or a youth, grab the keyboard away from your parents for just a second and put in the chat a number between one and ten go ahead and do that right now i'm seeing some numbers come in oh oh are there other numbers rolling in all right, Sarah, pick it out. Okay, I think since we have two fives, we should do number five. So we have one, two, three, four. And our star word of this year is rejoice. Rejoice is our word for the year for Pilgrim Church. Rejoice. Thank you for helping us pick those uh, words today. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how we're going to do our individual Star Wars, because you can't uh, do this without having individual Star Wars. So the way that we're going to do this is that we have lots. And if you are on the Zoom now, and you're a visitor among us. I don't think that we have any uh, newcomers among us, but if we do, put the first names of the people that are in your group in the chat now, and then everybody else, 
We have star words picked already for you at random. We had them all turned upside down when we did this. Um, and when we get to the music later in the service, which Max and Dot are gonna offer in the offertory and then also in the hymn at the end. Thanks, Bob, we're glad to have you with us as a visitor this morning. Um, we will put in the chat to each household a star word for the first name of each person in your household. Sarah and I are dividing this up and we'll do it while Max and Dot are leading the worship. Now think of your star word this way. The Magi followed a star which ultimately led them to Jesus. And therefore, we too use all of the resources that we have available to us, including creative and playful prayer practices and intention words for the new year to move us closer to Jesus. It's often easy to miss God in our daily midst. So having an intention word that comes from scripture to consider in these days and then also at the end of the year to look back and see where that word has been present allows for us to see God in ways that we might not have otherwise. So let's pray. In this season of epiphany, revelation, and wisdom, surprise us, O God, and guide us by the light of a star. Help us to be open to the gift that we might find through our star words and the playful guidance that they might offer to us this year. Amen. Now, one of the things we do every Sunday morning is we pray together and we pray with one another and for one another. If you have a prayer that you would like added to the prayers that we offer together this morning, I want to invite you to put those prayers into the chat right now. Let's start with joys. I hope there have been some joys this season, even if it has just been a quieter time to be resting and relaxing for a few days. Or maybe you have seen family, you have gotten a hug from someone that you love. If you have a prayer that you would like to lift up in Thanksgiving, would you please put that in the chat right now? And if you have a prayer that is a difficult thing, that you need to say out loud to this community or that you need to type that we can carry together. I invite you to put those in the prayers in the chat right now. And as things come in, I'm going to lift them up. Gratitude for a caring family is one of our joys this day and a joy to be part of this pilgrim community and grateful for Zoom where at least we can be together. And we have a lot of prayers of concern today. We pray for Hadley, who is having an MRI, for Bob, who is in ICU, for the good health of family members, we pray for Linnea and her family who are dealing with COVID in their house right now. We pray for Gail, whose cancer is getting more and more difficult. We pray for Carlo, facing a double mastectomy on Tuesday. We pray for Kathy, who has COVID and is immune compromised. This is Susan and Mike's dear friend. We pray for Carrie as she sits vigil with her beloved spouse. May they both know peace. We pray for those who are grieving the passing of former pilgrim member Bruce O'Shane. 
who passed away in Townsend this week. We pray for hope for the families in Colorado, dealing with the fires, and for families everywhere that are starting the year with hopeful hearts for a better future. We pray, pray traveling mercies for Jeff, who must travel this week, and for all who are traveling. For Tia Josefina, and for Nona, who have COVID. We pray for all these. And we lift up another Thanksgiving for Jim and Barb and Rich and Elizabeth, for the hymn sing on the day after Christmas, the blessing that that was for everyone in our community. Let us pray together. God of revelation, as we gather in praise for your son and his great gift to us, we remember the many needs of your church and your world. Wonderful counselor, we pray for your guidance and care as we enter another stage of this pandemic with Omicron and Delta creating a tsunami of COVID. Help us to hold on to some semblance of hope, even as we see record numbers of cases. Give courage to healthcare workers, patience and safety to school teachers and students, adaptability to all whose daily lives are impacted, and especially especially healing to all who are sick. As our optimism wanes about these next few weeks, help us to remember how far we have come. We lift up gratitude for the modern miracle of vaccines and all the lives that have been spared because of their creation and distribution. We have lifted up to you so many people who are in need of special care this day. For those who need healing, we pray it. For those who are grieving, we pray solace. For those who are anxious and afraid, we pray to hear your words, do not be afraid. The most common phrase in scripture, whisper it into our ears, O oh God. And we lift up all who are in need on this day, those who are homeless, those who are cold, those who do not have the resources that they need, that there might be enough to share with all who are in need. Guide us on the path of your salvation, O God, that the radiance and power of your Holy Spirit working in the world would gather all people into one community of peace and justice and that we might together worship you and proclaim your splendor. Amen. Now we're going to move into our communion service. And I'm going to start the service without putting the words on the screen yet, but I will put the words on the screen in just a moment. Sarah, show me that star word one more time. Rejoice. rejoice. Indeed, we are a community that rejoices. This is, thank you, Sarah. We are a community that rejoices, and Paul said that we could rejoice in all times. 
through our faith. And so we choose to do that. And here at the communion table, everyone is welcomed. We are welcomed by the one whom we praise. Jesus welcomes everyone at this table. No one is turned away. If you seek God's presence, come and eat. If you are hungry for spiritual food, come and eat. If you have questions and doubts, come and eat. If you feel unworthy, still come and eat. This table is spread for all of us that we might experience God's abundant and unconditional love. We bring ourselves before God, ready to receive God's grace and forgiveness. And so I invite you to pray the prayer of confession with me. Holy God, in your light we see light, and so too we see the veils of our ignorance and pride, the ways we treat ourselves and others without your mercy, love, or justice. Let the, the brightness, brightness of your morning burn through our, our fog of aimlessness, aimlessness and sin, and, and put, put a, a new song, song on our hearts. Our hearts. Teach, Teach us to see your world illumined anew, anew, anew as with the eyes of Jesus. And we, we pray, pray with his, his words, words, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the good news. This is the good news that causes us to rejoice. In Christ, God has given us a new star kindling unconditional love for us and showing us a well-lit path to wholeness and forgiveness. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to gather your communion elements and I'm going to gather the bread and the cup for our service now. Since Jesus' birth, with the visit of the wise ones, strangers from the East, Jesus was not content to limit his welcome and his message to his own people. Jesus was one who reached across human borders and boundaries, seeing in everyone a common heritage as a child of God. Whether it was Magi from the East, or a woman from Samaria, or a leper in a nearby colony, Jesus welcomed them all. And so we give thanks to God. Thank you, God, for the mighty sweep of your love that embraces all people and all nations. We thank you that you have sent Jesus, our teacher, to us, who showed us the way to new life, a new life of love that gathers all of our diversity together in the one body of Christ. And so we pray that you would bless this meal that we share together across the Zoom today, as this broken bread was once gathered on a hillside, and then when gathered became a meal for so many. So may we be brought together to make something wonderful. And as this cup of the new covenant was poured out so that all might share in the signs of new life, so may our lives be poured out in compassion for our brothers and our sisters and our siblings and our neighbors everywhere. We pray this for love's sake. Amen. And now I invite you to participate in communion at home by sharing the bread that reminds us 
of our gifts and drinking deeply so that we may always travel on. Let us now give thanks for this meal. I'm going to share on the screen the prayer for us. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by, by granting giving our presence of, Christ. of Jesus Christ. Strengthen, Strengthen our faith, faith, increase our love for, for one another, another send, and us send us forth into, into the world in courage and, and peace. peace. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So now Scott and Max are going to extend the Christmas season a little bit further, and they are going to um, bring us our offertory. During the offertory, and then also during the last hymn, Sarah and I are going to be madly typing into the chat your star words, so watch for those, and we'll also be mailing them out later. We are a community that keeps on going. It's really an extraordinary um, thing that we have done in these last two years. We have weathered every storm. We have pivoted when we needed to. And so please support this church, support this community that means so much to all of us. And now here is uh, Max and Dot. Let 
entered in those wise men three full reverently upon their knee and offered them in his presence their bold and mirth and frankincense no We almost got done with the Star Words, but we're not quite there, so there will be a few more during the hymn. Don't worry if you did not get yours. Um, uh, but now we are going to pray our prayer of dedication together. Let's pray. Bright morning star, star your light, light has, has come, come, and the, and birth, the birth of Jesus, Jesus has overwhelmed, overwhelmed us, us with joy. joy. Like the, like the Magi, Magi of long, of long ago, ago, may we may be drawn, drawn to you and offer such gifts as we are able. able. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain, which is not in the bulletin. Number, yes it is. It is. Is it in the, is it printed? Is the... On the back. On the back, but it is not on the online bulletin. <laughs> oh, C-N-C-H. No. It's not on the Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> literally just discovered that it is not in the online bulletin i oh. am very sorry this one is one that i think is fairly familiar so um, number 154 in the new century hymnal okay and yes. um, are you able to hold up the screen uh i i yes i can but i have to sing I it that too. Helps. oh you have to sing it too <laughs> Everybody knows okay yeah you know the refrain <laughs> We're going to go with it. I apologize. I, if I had figured that out 20 minutes ago, we would have had it on the screen. But meanwhile, we have Max and Dot singing it. Uh, and you sing along too. Thank you, Max and Dot, for that music and for 
I wanted to say a quick word of thanksgiving for all of our staff who just seem to be creative and adaptive and able to lead us in rejoicing in the midst of everything. So thank you all so much. And now is the moment for anyone who's on the Zoom who did not get a star word for someone in your household, just to put in the chat directly to me, and I will make sure you get one um, before the end of the postlude. But now hear this benediction. The Magi were told to go home by a different way. And we are invited to follow a star wherever it leads us and to go home by a different way this year for the glory and beauty and rejoicing that this year will surely bring somehow or another. Go in peace, go to rejoice. Amen. Thank you all. I invite you to um, put it in gallery view.